Hello everyone, and welcome to another chat on our Inspiring Conversation series with myself, Bindu Unni. I am an executive coach, facilitator, and marketeer. I help people around me to create impact in their worlds by tapping into their inner potential. The objective and the idea behind these series is to give all of us another perspective as we go about our lives sometimes really thriving and seeing the opportunity and sometimes just barely surviving and managing through the day. Because all of us are going through something completely new, never witnessed in our generation. So these conversations are just meant to inspire us, pep us up, give us an action to do something different as we go about our day. And today we have Isabella Hamilton, a good friend of mine, and I fondly call her Isa. She's the founder of Initiative Hub, which is a coaching and communication consultancy company. She helps clients transform and thrive in their worlds. She's one inspiring girl because whenever we meet each other, whether it's in a coffee shop or a beach and now on Zoom calls, uh, she always leaves me feeling really inspired. So, hi, Isa. Hi, Bindu. Thank you very much for this beautiful introduction. And I feel the same way about you. So, there is a mutual, mutual feeling going on there. I always feel very excited and very motivated before I meet you and after I meet you. So, thank you as well for bringing these emotions into my life. <laughs> That's great. And so, I'm going to ask you the secret. So how do you stay so positive and motivated mm -hmm. every single day and especially in the context of today? Mm. Well, it's not easy, let's face it, uh, because we all live in these uncertain times and we did not know what will happen. We cannot, we didn't expect it, so we had to adjust. So I'm trying as much as I can to do whatever I've been doing before that and more. But that about that later. So um, just when you were saying these introductions, my number one tip would be to surround yourself with positive people, with like-minded people. And uh, yes, we all like to meet with them in person because then you get more of their energy and you can have some, um, you know, maybe a stronger connection. However, just as we do right now, we connect perfectly on Zoom and you can do that very easily as well. So um, every day, basically, when I wake up, I'm just trying to think, who can I connect with today? Who from my so-called inner circle can I call and be in touch with and check on them how you are? And also, if I don't feel myself for some reasons, like 100%, see whether they can help me as well and just give me a little tip of how to pick myself up. Maybe I haven't thought about it. Yeah. So number one, surround yourself with the like-minded people and just use them, you know, abuse them these days, if you have to, in a good way, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be, uh, yeah, that would be first thing that came to my mind. First thing. All right. Okay. And that's why that's the motivation behind these conversations, right? This is actually the inspiring conversation series is meant to give everyone a different perspective because as we go through our lives, some days are great. And I speak to my, for myself, some days mm. are awesome. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. And some days are oh, okay. And some days are not so great. And I'm like, everything seems out of control. So when, when there is a different perspective and it's nice that you, mm. are, you ask for the different perspective from someone else, it just gives us uh, another way to do the same thing. Absolutely, because we, and you will know it very well, we learn from each other so much. I mean, we give each other the tips, we give each other advice, the books to read, the audio books to listen to, podcasts, videos, whatever that is, you know, this is how we thrive. Yeah. This is how we transform and thrive. That's and we more than ever now need connection. Right. We talked about it a lot. We need to stay connected rather than isolated. And we need to think about the people that need it more, more than us. So um, we, are, we, we need each other. And in these times, more than ever. Yes, yes, absolutely. And there's one thing that I definitely want you to bring up is that during our last conversation, you gave me a tip that I have been diligently applying every single morning. So could you 
tell us and tell me again what you do, the magic morning. Okay. The magic mornings, yes, the magic formula. So that would be step number two, actually. Uh, think about creating a new habit. And, uh, okay, it froze. Go ahead. Okay, because it froze, that's okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so think about creating a new habit. Uh, so that, okay. Sorry, you think about creating a new habit or look at the, list of the things you've always wanted to do but you have never done because you are waiting for this one day that you will do it so now it can be the time so for myself for quite a long time i've been trying to wake up early and make the most of my mornings so on the first of april uh, i've decided to put the alarm clock at five o'clock and see whether i can get out of bed and push myself and i did it uh, partially, I followed uh, Robin Sharma's advice, the 5 a.m. club you may have heard of. Yes. So I've done what he was telling me to do. So 20 minutes of uh, exercise, then 20 minutes um, look at plan your day, and 20 minutes of reading. But then I adjusted it according to me. So basically, I wake up at 5 and I do a little bit of mindfulness, meditation, just to ground myself and feel more present. And then straight after 10 or 15 minutes, I pick up the book that I want to read. And I read for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, uh, depending how I feel about it. And uh, this is a perfect timing for me. This is when the house is quiet, everybody's still sleeping. And it's my time, and I absolutely cherish the, these times. And later on, which is around six o'clock, I open up my diary and I plan my day. I look at what I want to achieve this day. And straight after that, I delve into the most difficult task, the hard one on the list, so that I can take it off and feel very happy about it. And last thing, that task is usually the one that will bring me closer to my income goal. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a cool one. How do you feel, how, yeah, how do you feel you the hardest task in the as a first thing? Do you get to complete it, or what do you do? You know, this hardest task task usually takes a little bit longer than let's say half an hour or an hour. But if I don't finish it because it's a really big one, uh, then I'll just start on it. Because you know, it's all about the small steps that you do. You know, it's, uh, you will not, uh, when you think about it as a staircase, you may not climb all the way to the top, but just take a few steps uh, from that staircase and you will feel much better later on. And then you will get maybe more clarity about what you want to do next, the next day. Yes. So that would be my advice what to do when the task is really big. Right, and what I'm hearing... And I have to ask you, so how you feel about uh, waking up early now for a few days in a row? So, uh, like I mentioned to you, uh, I'm an early riser, so I've always mm -hmm. uh, gotten, gotten up early. And that's not been my challenge, but my challenge has been after I get up, what I do with that time. And that's the mm -hmm. clarity you brought to me. Because mm. uh, I would, I would do. Uh, sometimes I would do something that I just need to get by, get done for the day. Sometimes I take the previous day's tasks and say, "Oh, I didn't finish that, so let me try do something that day." So I do a variety of things for the extra time. Uh, mm. But the clarity that you brought for me is that kind of just decide. One thing that I haven't been able to do is to just sit down with a book, distraction free. Now that mm -hmm. has been a challenge through the day. So the moment you said that, the idea that how I picked it up was I got, I still get up at the same time in the morning, but now I'm very focused about what I do. I actually keep the alarm for 25 minutes and I, I do not get up from my desk, uh, from, the, from the place that I sit and I just read. And mm -hmm. that is beautiful because I, I've got that, it's like suddenly I've got that time and that focus. And thanks to you, I'm almost halfway through uh, the book that has been lying on my shelf for many, beautiful. many months. And we'll talk yes. about that at some other point in time. But thank you for that. That's well how I it and I implemented it. Yeah. And while you were saying this, I mean, I'm very, very happy, very proud of you. Uh, when you were saying uh, just that, it occurred to me that make sure that you have a dedicated space to do these things. Don't do it in your bed or don't go to the spare bedroom and do it in your bed because this is just 
not going to work because you will be so tempted to lie down again. So go to the room where you will sit, whether it's an armchair or at the table, in the living room or in the kitchen, wherever it is, just have your dedicated space to do that. That will make it easier and better. Done. And then, uh, and then have that focus and undistracted time. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. <laughs> now tell me, what, during the days where maybe you're not feeling so positive and so mm-hmm. motivated, what do you do during those times? Mm. Well, um, this is actually uh, the third step almost that I can say and on the days when I don't feel 100%. So the third steps to do is to get your body moving, exercise. Because that's also one thing that I started. I've been exercising a few times a week in the past. But this time around, I really exercise six times a week. Uh, Sunday is my day off. And uh, when I have a day when I wake up, I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like I make sure that I force myself to actually do this 45 to one hour cardio. And uh, I feel what's going on during the training and I feel what's happening after the training. You know, the heartbeat, you know, you, you, your heart beat, beats faster and uh, the endorphins start, you know, the blood starts flowing. It's amazing. So that would be one, one thing to do when you don't feel that good when you wake up just force yourself to really go out and exercise if it's not cardio then go for a brisk walk i mean go for a bike ride uh some people started skipping now because it's very easy and it's just a skipping rope it doesn't take any money but it just gets the body moving and you will feel much better afterwards and uh, sometimes it's i will call someone you know, if the, it's not 6 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> but a little bit later, I would just call someone and just have a conversation and either say, you know, uh, just, you know, come on, give me, pick me up here a little bit, lift me, lift my spirits up. Mm-hmm. So that would be another thing. And above all, please, please don't get upset with yourself when you have days like this, because it's normal. Everybody has days like that. Just allow yourself to feel this way. Just relax. And don't get upset because that won't help you and that won't help anybody who is around you. And, you know, kids and spouses, right now we are all in one space. It won't work. So just be with it and uh, do something that you love. Maybe it's cooking, maybe start cleaning, you know, decluttering we just talked about. It's so, uh, it really uh, brings you, you know, grounds you cleaning up, sorting something out, cleaning the cupboard, whatever that is. Um, try a couple of these things and see if it will work for you. True, true. Uh, I, mm-hmm. And I like the decluttering bit that you brought up because mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's just a physical act, uh, but mm-hmm. that kind of really clears up not only the physical clutter, it could just be a simple desk in front of us or a small section of, of our cupboard or a bookshelf, whatever it may look like. Exactly. But just doing that physical act actually helps uh, clear the mental clutter and kind of clears your head as well. So yes, yeah, totally. And and you know it calms you down big time. You know when you have to put the things, you just like you feel grounded and thoughts will start coming, and you'll be like, oh, that was good actually. Now I'm ready to roar again. <laughs> it's like putting your minds in a in a clear bookshelf, it's like a mind shelf, and it kind of all falls into place, and then you kind of like it, and then you move move ahead. I love that. And I just shared with you a few minutes ago that I did exactly that with my bookshelf. And I look at this bookshelf because it's right here. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy when I look at it, you know, because it's a little task. But I know when I was doing it, I felt a bit like, oh, I needed a break from everything that I was doing. And it really helped me. Mm. That's great. That's great. I'm mm-hmm. going to make a point from what you said when, when you have the entire family under the same roof, 24 bar 7 in the time that we mm-hmm. have. Sometimes it does get a bit uh, uh, too much. Mm. Have you mm-hmm. had moments like that? And what do you do at that point in time? Yeah, I mean, you know, we are all in a totally different uh, environment and uh, the house is full. The spouses are working, you know, sometimes in the next, in the next door in the room or in the same room and you have kids. I mean, myself, I have four and a six year old kids that love running around and really shouting and having, you know, they have to get rid of this, this, uh, you know, the energy, the negative energy, or when they are, you know, they have positive energy, that's another story. So yes, um, there are days when, you know, how, when I'm thinking, how will I cope with that? But number one, 
um, I would say is to communicate openly about what's going on. If let's say your kids have a day that, oh, I don't want to do the homework, I don't actually feel like uh, doing all the tasks today, uh, just again, as we were saying, they are human beings as well, allow them for, for this to happen and then have a chat and see, you know, they probably miss their friends, they miss the teachers, uh, they want to be in touch with them. So, you know, I, I have a list of things that we can do together when that happens, when the house feels like uh, too full. So we either will start dancing together because we all like moving around. We will kale, boil, cake, <laughs> bake something together or cook something, or we will put on a favorite show. We'll just take a break from any task that we were supposed to do and just have fun. And I told you before that right at the very start of this lockdown, my six-year-old daughter, when you were setting up the rules, how will we go through this distant uh, learning? At the very end, she said, mommy, but above all, let's just have fun, okay? And I said, you got it, girl. Let's have fun. Let's not forget about that. So we are bringing fun into the house. Uh, you know, there will be days when we'll be spending time. I know I'm very grateful that I have a garden. We'll be spending time in the garden, just, you know, doing the weeds or, you know, playing or cutting the grass, whatever that is. Yeah. So just think about the ways of, uh, of how you can make everybody's day better. You know these people very well. You, you know, this is your family members. You know what will work for them and what takes for them. So be it a Zoom call with your kids' uh, friends. Uh, this is amazing as well. I've watched it many times, what happens after my daughter talks to their friends. It's the connection, what we talked about at the beginning. They crave it too. Yeah. So let's give it to them. Yeah, mm. and we need to also recognize that we, we need to meet them where they are because yeah, there are days just like us, we get up saying, oh, oh my God, that's another day. And they do too. So it, it, they can't be like positive and ready to take everything every single day. So it's about Absolutely. meeting them where they are. And, yeah, uh, and that's the communication, you know, observe. I mean, we are also uh, in a good position because we are coaches, right? So you just watch and you see, you can pick up the signals and then you are like, okay, I think it's time to sit down and have a little chit chat. Uh, we'll On design. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Mm. Lovely, lovely. So I'm going to summarize a couple of really interesting, very simple mm. uh, points that we have. you've actually highlighted is, the first one is surround yourself with uh, positive uh, people. So connect with them either on a Zoom call or pick up the phone and make sure that you're in touch with people who, uh, if, if, even if it's not face to face, but just kind of catch up with them. Uh, the second one is uh, the uh, pick up a new habit and kind of just bring that in, uh, bring that into your routine. Yours was waking up in the morning and I picked that up from you. Uh, do the hardest task first, uh, which is uh, make progress. Need not, mm. need not be that you complete it, but do make progress on that hardest task. Uh, mm. Keep your body moving because I think yes. that's, that's another mm. important thing. And communicate, 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 communicate yeah. with your children, communicate with your family members, communicate with yourself. Exactly. I was just about to add that thing to yes. <laughs> listen to your body, listen to your intuition, just stop and pause. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Isa. This has been a really inspiring conversation. Thank you. Definitely Thanks a lot. And Isa, where can people find you? Well, they can head to my website, initiativehub.com, and it's the same name on my Instagram. My handle is at uh, initiativehub. Great. Thank you.